with some money and set up some room out there. My daddy-in-law, uh, when he would get large for his birthday, he would uh, he would turn them upside down. You know, he was a little older or something. <laughs> oh, he was he was Charlie Ford or something else. Uh, it says a special thank you. Every kindness has a power to bring joy to someone's heart. Thanks for being such a special reminder to a special church family that my mom loved very much. Thank you for everything. The family of Nancy Hill. Amen. Well, I tell you, Nancy, oh man, what a what a presence she has right now. Being in Jesus' presence and the presence of her loved ones. Man, glory and glory. And all that's going on here, uh, she don't have to worry about it anymore. It's all over. I'll be looking at the song, uh, it's Proverbs 23 tonight, chapter 23 of Proverbs. But before we do, uh, I've got some a uh, uh, few questions. I figured uh, it might be a good uh, uh, quiz time uh, here in uh, the uh, uh, month of June. And uh, too bad these aren't Christmas questions. Uh, I thought about that. It would be a good time to have Christmas questions because... Uh, uh, what six months? Six months from tomorrow would be is Christmas Eve, so better start your shopping. Um, when we get it done. <laughs> hey, but these, you know what the title of this is? Mean women, mean women. Now, can I get an amen from the men? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you, brother. Amen. And I was, <laughs> oh, boy. We have a good time here at the church, don't we? We have a good time. And we miss you, Brother Eddie and Sister Debbie. We sure do. Oh, uh, I'm going to give you three answers, ask you a question about a woman in the Bible, a mean woman. And uh, you, uh, you write down the right one, okay? Don't write down the wrong one. Get on the left one. Okay, number one. Who advised her husband to curse God and die? Was it Lot's wife? Was it Jezebel? Or was it Job's wife? Job. Job. Oh, you're supposed to write down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going down. Yeah. And then we we'll go back over. Okay. Okay. And then number two. Uh, who refused to appear before her husband, uh, the king, at his command? Was it Bathsheba, Vashti, or Jezebel? Who refused to appear before her husband, the king, at his command? Bathsheba, Vashti, or uh, Jezebel? All right, number three. Who lied to the Holy Spirit and an apostle uh, and died with her husband, Achilla, uh, or Sapphira, or Mary? Who lied to the Holy Spirit and an apostle and died with her husband, Aquila, uh, Sapphira, or Mary? Okay, uh, number four. Who incited her husband to do evil when her husband was a king? Was it Jezebel? Was it Jezreel? Or was it Juniper? challenged Moses' authority, Korah, Miriam, or Sarah? Who challenged Moses' authority, Korah, uh, Miriam, or Sarah? What is it, women, ma'am? Read that one again. Uh, Read it again. Read it again. Who challenged Moses' authority, Miriam, Korah, or Sarah? Number six, who played the harlot to her husband uh, and her husband was a prophet? Was it Miriam, Mary Magdalene, or Gomer? Who played the harlot to her husband who was a prophet? Miriam, Mary Magdalene, or Gomer? Okay. Number seven, what does Proverbs 7 indicate that a seductress does? Catches a man and kisses him, uh, waits for a man to notice her, or stays 
is at home. What does Proverbs say of an indicate that a seductress do? That's hard to say, isn't it? Well, a seducing woman, okay, uh, does. Catch a man and kiss him, wait for a man to notice her, and or stay at home. All right, number eight. A foolish woman says, stolen waters are what? In Proverbs 9 and 17. Uh, sweet, desirable, or not satisfying. The foolish woman says, stolen waters are sweet, uh, desirable, or not satisfying. Number nine, what is the marital status of the harlot in uh, Proverbs 7? Uh, was she divorced, uh, widowed, or married? What's the status, marital status of the harlot in Proverbs 7? Divorced, widowed, or married? All right. Now this is another one in Proverbs 14.1. The wise woman builds her blank, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Is that marriage, family, or house? The wise woman builds her blank, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Marriage, family, or house? All right. Okay, you ready to go over? Okay. Uh, uh, who advised her husband to curse God and die? Yeah. Job's wife. Okay, number two, who refused to appear before her husband, the king, at his command? Vashti, right. Okay, number three, who lied to the Holy Spirit of an apostle and died with her husband? Sapphira, indeed. Okay, number four, who incited her husband to do evil? Jezebel. Okay, number five, who challenged Moses' authority? Miriam. Miriam, yes. Okay, number, I mean, yeah. Okay, number six, who played the harlot to her husband, the prophet? Gomer. Gomer. Mm -hmm. I always thought Gomer was a man. Uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, before I learned in the Bible, it was a woman's name. And uh, the only thing I had to know was Gomer Pyle. <laughs> oh, well. But number seven, what does Proverbs 7 say that a seductress does? Yes, yeah, she catches a man and kisses him. She catches the man, she lays wait for him, and catches him and kisses him. Number eight, the foolish woman says stolen waters are. Sweet, yes, stolen waters are sweet. Number nine, what is the marital status of the harlot in Proverbs 7? She's married, yes. Okay, number 10, the wise woman builds her house, but the more foolish pulls it down with her hands. Now, raise your hand if you got every one of them. Ready, not a hand went up. <laughs> uh, how many missed one? Let's see. Okay, we have two that missed one. Okay, so two. How many missed two? Okay, all right, three. All right, and the rest of you pass and you graduate. <laughs> all right. Well, I enjoyed that, especially having the answers. That make make a big difference. So, I'm glad we have the answer here in the 66 books. That is the word of the Lord, praise God. Uh, here in uh, Proverbs chapter 23, uh, the uh, key verse, the center verse, I think, of this uh, chapter uh, is verse 26. And I would like to speak to you on uh, what the Lord has given us, uh, a given heart, a given heart. Uh, we, I mean, we can have a giving heart, uh, and that, you know, uh, is part of being a Christian. We are a giving person, but uh, we would not be inclined to do that, to be a generous and a giving person uh, as a Christian, had we not first, if our heart wasn't a given heart, a heart that is 
is given unto the Lord. A heart that stays given unto the Lord. This is what the Lord wants. I think this is what God wants most from every one of his children is for us uh, to continually uh, have our heart given unto him. The Bible says, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Father, thank you for the precious word, Lord, that's open before us tonight. And in this chapter, Lord, uh, teach us and remind us and help us to consider, Lord, just how given our hearts are unto you. And Lord, may we uh, uh, find ourselves uh, not only checking ourselves, examining ourselves, and our willingness to be surrendered to you. But help us, Lord, to be more determined now than ever uh, to be a, a person that is given unto you uh, from the heart outward. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, here was... Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Solomon was the, the uh, he was the son of David, and at, when Solomon uh, was king, then um, the Lord used him, and he depended on the Lord, and his wisdom was given to him of God, uh, and he respected his father. He, uh, even though his father was not a perfect man and had sinned, uh, you know, so often, and uh, he, uh, David had his faults, yet Solomon looked up to David, and Solomon was David's son, and Solomon appreciated the fact that he was David's son. And here Solomon has his own children, uh, his own uh, daughters, and his own sons, and here as he writes in the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, he was not just writing it for God's people everywhere, but but he was writing it uh, first and foremost for his family. And I'm so thankful that the Word of God is just like that. The Word of God is not just meant for us to read it in church and to study it in church and meant just for the congregation uh, and, uh, and that's it. But the Lord wants the Bible in the home and he has written the Bible uh, especially to be used and to be taught and its precepts uh, carried out in the home because this is what is the foundation of civilization uh, is the structure and the integrity of the home that, that God had created and that God had made. You see, the first uh, 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 man and woman on the earth, when God created them, uh, and he put them together, you know, uh, and he and he married them. He he made them uh, and brought them together, and they became as one. And they uh, constituted the first home uh, on this earth, and that began civilization. And the reason why civilization is coming apart at the seams now is because of the forsaking, the reimagining, the re. Uh, uh, structuring of the home. <laughs> oh man, this uh, let's see. Oh, the, this Santi, I recommend this highly. If it'll help a preacher, it'll help anybody. Mm. Come right out of the tap of the Washington County uh, uh, Service Authority. Well, anyway, anyway, what makes up a home? is a husband that is willing uh, to, uh, to be the head of the household and to uh, see, to be the spiritual guide for his family and for his wife uh, to be the wife and the mother that God wants her to be and for the daddy to be the father and for the children uh, to uh, honor the place of their father and mother. Now, when it comes, uh, you know, uh, to giving your father or your mother gifts uh, at Christmas time uh, or at uh, birthdays or whatever, uh, it, uh, uh, you know, when you think about it, when, uh, you know, uh, mommy was sort of hard to buy for. I didn't know exactly what to, to get her. We didn't have much to, to spend, uh, but always tried to give her a little something. 
for her birthday at Christmas time, and you know Mother's Day, uh, and she was a little harder to buy for because uh, you know how, you know how it is with a woman. I mean, the women are a little harder to buy for than men. Why a man will take anything, won't he? Why, and he'd be glad for it. And I think that a man had uh, rather have, uh, if he could have anything, that he, he'd rather have something to eat uh, better than anything he could wear or whatever. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the worst thing you could do with, with your wife uh, or your mom is to give them a, a new mop or a new uh, washcloth or something like that, cleaning or, you know, or something like that. And I don't think that would sit well with Dad either. You know, if you uh, give him a, a thought him a sickle, you know, to cut the weeds, or he would wonder, well, you know, hey, am I not taking care of things? But uh, Dads are usually, a, you know, a little easier to buy to buy for, uh, and God is really easy to please. He really is. Uh, God, all we have to do is to give Him. Uh, you know, we think about all the things we could give to the Lord, and that you know we could turn it over to the Lord. But uh, but God, uh, to please God, it's a simple matter. Uh, ask Him what He wants, and He says, "Son, give me thy heart. Son, give me your heart. I want your heart." You see, without that, without giving Him our heart, we would never have been saved. We would never have accepted the Lord as Savior. Uh, we, uh, when we came to Jesus, we believed uh, in the gospel. We believed in what He done, done for us on Calvary, the burial, death, burial, and resurrection. That He did it all for us. That He took our place. That He purchased uh, our redemption. Thank God uh, with His own blood. And this was God's way of salvation. This was the plan of God, the Heavenly Father. And by accepting Jesus into our heart, then uh, we turned around and we surrendered ourselves to him, to Jesus. But yet we surrendered ourselves unto God. And when we did that, God birthed us into the, his kingdom through and by the Holy Spirit, praise God. We became born again. If we had not surrendered, then we would not be saved. You see, giving our hearts unto God is a matter of submission. It's a matter of humility. It's a matter of giving. Uh, that, you know, so often people will say, well, I've given my heart to the Lord. I mean, I'm saved. I'm, I'm fine. I'm doing okay. But yet they, they, uh, they don't live for the Lord, and they don't do the things that please God, and they don't uh, obey God. They do the quite the opposite and then say, well, I've given my heart to the Lord. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Uh, because uh, when you surrender uh, something unto the Lord, then it belongs to him. We, uh, we don't loan our heart to God and then we take it back, you know. Uh, we don't say, well, my Lord, I'm going to loan my heart to you in order for you to save me. And Jesus, I want you to save me, but then after that I'm saved, and after that I become a Christian, then I'd like my heart back, please. I'd like to have it. Now, Now, when you uh, give uh, your parents a present, then it would be a bad thing for you to slip around and, and take it home with you before you leave, right? Man, that would be awful. And I'll tell you what, your daddy or your mommy would come after you with a switch. <laughs> Boy, uh, what it belongs to them, if you give, if you give your parents something, it belongs to them. It doesn't belong to us anymore. And why in the world uh, do so many think that uh, uh, that Christian living is a uh, loan, is a lending process that we give God or we loan Him our heart, or we loan Him our time on Sunday. We love him a little bit of time reading the Bible and a little bit of time of praying and all that. But then we take it all back. We 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 take our we take our you know when we take everything back, then what we're doing we're taking our heart back. We're saying, Lord, you can have it for a while, but I want it too, and I want it, and I want to be my own person and do my own thing. When you. 
Christianity is not a landing place. This is not the plan of salvation. It requires and demands that we, our heart, be given unto the Lord and stay given unto the Lord to be our father's property and not our own. The Solomon told his son, he said, son, give me thy heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Keeping our eyes on Jesus as we trust him uh, with our hearts is the way that we are saved, praise God. Uh, continuing in a given uh, mode in our Christian experience. That's the only way that we have a relationship with the Lord. It's from the heart outward. You remember what uh, Samuel said to Jesse, that God, uh, you know, Jesse was, uh, had brought all the big uh, older sons, you know, before uh, Samuel to, you know, to, to find out who would be king. And, uh, and Samuel said, God doesn't look upon the outside. God doesn't look upon the appearance, but God looketh upon the heart. God looks upon our hearts as well. And I mean, that can be for a positive or a negative. I mean, God knows what we mean deep down in our hearts. When uh, uh, things might not appear to be so around us, God looks on the heart. We may feel like we're weak and we may feel like that we're uh, unable and that we don't have the ability to do a lot of things, but God knows our hearts. And because he does, he knows we can praise God. And you see, God also knows our hearts, whether our hearts are given to him or whether that we're sort of holding on to them ourselves. Uh, we got a little string around, around our heart and we give it to God and God takes it and, and then we sort of jerk it back whenever we want to. And we can't do that. No, the, the happiest that we could ever make God and the, the most pleasing that God will be with us is when our heart is totally given unto the Lord, surrendered unto the Lord, uh, that we, uh, you know, according to his mercies and grace, that we submit ourselves uh, unto the Lord, uh, you know, as uh, present ourselves, our body, uh, yes, but our heart first. It has to be from the heart, uh, a living sacrifice, a holy and blameless, and uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that we might prove that which is the, uh, the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. There's a, there's a whole lot in that statement. Uh, the, the Pharisees were ones who outwardly wanted to appear and do things, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, go through the ceremonies and the procedures to appear as they, I mean, they were giving it all, you know, they were saying, well, you know, we're giving people to the Lord. I mean, we're, I'm a given person. I've given myself. And uh, look at me, what I'm doing, what I'm giving to the Lord. When they would put the money in the uh, offerings uh, uh, place there in the temple, uh, they would come and they would, uh, you know, make a big deal out of all they were giving. But that little widow came and had those two mites, and they were all she had, but she gave her all to the Lord. And uh, Jesus, when he saw that, uh, he said, she's given more than any of the richest has ever given. And she did it because when Jesus saw her put those two little mites into the offering plate, she, uh, he saw her putting her heart in that offering plate. Now that's the way it is with the child of God. Let's not be like the Pharisees and just, uh, you know, give God uh, a few little outward things, but let's give God what he wants most. What he wants most is what uh, we have the biggest trouble with because we are uh, independent people. Uh, we, uh, our natural side says, no, you be in charge. Uh, I'm going to be in charge and, and uh, I'm going to run things in my life. I'm going to have things my way. I'm going to do things my way. And um, that's the way that it is. And, we, you know, we, uh, we, we, our biggest problem is not with others. It's not with this world or, uh, you know, but our problem is with our self, our nature, uh, you know, our, our being, our, 
our old man because we want we we just we just struggle and we battle with hey uh, you know Lord I I want to continually give my heart to you I want to be a given hearted person uh, uh, giving our hearts to the Lord is not just a one time thing but it is a continual thing it's a lifestyle that we live I mean we uh, we get up in the morning. And we've got our choice to do whatever we want and to be whatever we want, to say whatever we want, and, and to uh, manage our life. But every morning we must give ourselves to the Lord. It's not like being saved, uh, you know, uh, constant, but it's a constant state in our relationship with God of God being the master and us being the servant, of God being the father and us being the child. Uh, of God, uh, you know, guiding us and instructing us and leading us and then us follow him, uh, him speaking and we listening instead of us speaking and then God having to listen all the time and uh, us uh, requiring and then God uh, obeying us. We are to obey God and by obeying God, that means uh, that, that requires that we have a given heart. And I tell you, when you, uh, 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 you've experienced this, and I have too, the happiest that I am in my life is when I am uh, totally yielded and willing to give my heart unto the Lord, to not take it for myself. I've had those days where I'd get in myself, I'd get in the old self, and I'd get proud, proud and think about, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you know, and it's me, that's what that's what I want to do, and I want to do well at the, that, uh, that the Lord don't want that, and uh, and I get in trouble, don't you? I get a little stubborn, and, and you know, when we do, what does the Bible say? Uh, I like what the scripture says uh, in verse 13, withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die, Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. And when I get a little stubborn and self-willed, then uh, you know what the Lord does? He sees me. I'm trying to take my heart back. I'm trying to be that Indian giver, trying to do what I want to do. So what does the Lord do? Uh, as he, I mean, he blesses and he feeds us. He clothes us. He takes care of us. But God has a switch on the wall up there in heaven. <laughs> God knows how to use the switch. <laughs> oh, man. And I've been there and you've been there growing up. Uh, Daddy and Mommy, that wasn't a sign that they didn't love us or anything. But that they were trying to rescue our uh, to us and to teach us right from wrong and to let us know that we don't get by with doing what we want to do all the time. That we have to do that which is right and that we have to submit ourselves uh, to our parents and let them rule, let them be the parents. I'll tell you, that's what's the matter with America today is that uh, the children are whipping the parents and uh, the children, you know, the parents are obeying the children and the children have rule, uh, you know, and it's simply because that they will not submit themselves uh, and parents will take their place and stand up and, and be a, a, a fathers be a man and a woman and a, a wife be a, a strong woman and say, hey, we're doing the right thing for you. We know what's best. You don't know more than we do. Uh, we know what's best for you. I tell you, brothers and sisters, it takes a surrender. And God knows how to get us to surrender. It's a whole lot easier to go ahead and, 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 uh, and give our hearts to the Lord and let him be in charge instead of us trying to be in charge than it is for God to give us a good whooping. Because one way or another, God's going to have his way here. He's going to have his way. And boy, you know, I've had beatings. Uh, well, not beatings, but whoopings. I thought they were beatings, you know, but they weren't that bad, I, you know. Uh, not that bad at all. Well, I've hurt God more than he's ever hurt me, uh, and, you know. And uh, he may correct us, and it may hurt, but I'm thankful that God loves us enough to do that, aren't you? Amen. Praise God. To get us to, to, to 
we see the importance of giving our heart to him. Uh, the given heart uh, is a heart that continues the, the proven values of the parents. Uh, you know, the, uh, the values that daddy and mommy had, even though we didn't have a whole lot in this world and a, a, you know, a lot of this world's possessions, <laughs> I consider myself rich, and, I, and my brothers and sisters did too, uh, because we had parents who had good values, praise God. And they really, I mean, thank God for a good father and a good mother that has good values. That, that, I, I, that has meant a lot to me down through the years, and I think about that. And the things that Daddy taught me, and the, the things that Mommy taught me, Lord, and mercy, they might, the first witness that ever witnessed to me about Jesus was mommy. And she was the one that she would whip harder than daddy. I mean, she was, but now she didn't beat Jesus into him. Now, you can't beat Jesus into anybody. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, she would whoop us. I tell you, uh, uh, sometime maybe during, uh, toward the end of the day, uh, she would have us to come and sit on the couch and she'd be in the middle and she'd get the family Bible there off the coffee table and open it up. And she'd read and she would uh, turn and read, look at the pictures and the paintings, you know. And, and I, you can't help but love someone and, and a respect them, the values that they have. And, you know, that's instilled in me and it's instilled in my family. And that is what uh, we have to remember about God. When we keep our hearts given, given unto the Lord, then, praise God, we see the importance of the values that God gives to us, obeying his word and doing what he says, uh, then truly, amen, that makes us happy. Because when we sin and we rebel against God and we try to hold on to our heart and pull back our heart and live in selfishness and self-righteousness and self-will, then our, uh, we never are satisfied, we're never happy, we're miserable because we know we uh, deep down we're not where we should be, and then we're just going through the forms and the motions. Uh, you know, this world, Lord, in mercy, the, the confusion and all that. The happiest that we could ever make uh, the Lord in heaven, our Father in heaven, is to be yielded unto him to be given unto him from the heart out. And then that in turn will make us happy. Because I've noticed uh, growing up that uh, the, the more that we surrendered unto our parents and did what they said, then the stronger our family was, the more together our family was, uh, the, uh, the better it felt to be uh, Watson Server's son, amen. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it hurt to be Watson Server's son or Delphia Server's son, uh, because, but it wasn't due to them, man. It was due to me. It was due to me being mean and, uh, and you know, and carrying on and all that. Oh, I, I remember I'd get in trouble with school and I, I dreaded because I'd get called every time. I couldn't get by with anything. Uh, I know uh, I got caught one time smoking in the bathroom uh, there at the, uh, you know, the, uh, and it be it all went in the bathroom in the school, in the high school, and uh, uh, there was a guy in there and he was smoking. And he said, here, Bob, I looked this up, but I need to go uh, here and you can have the rest of it. And so, hey, I, I grabbed it, you know, and I was just a puffing away and the door opened and boy, here come the coach in, Lord in mercy. Uh, uh, Coach Lewis, and uh, when he come in, boy, he looked at me and I had this cigarette, and I was froze. I didn't know what to do. I, you know, I couldn't flick it in the commode or anything. I, I was just standing there in front of the window, mm -hmm. and he said, "Come with me." You know, so that other guy got away with it, but but I had to go to the office, and man, there was a pop like a shotgun come out of that office, and it was a pavel. I mean, a great day, and it was ooh, boy. And boy, did it hurt. And guess what he did? He called home. He told mommy. And boy, you know, I was a young kid. When I got home, I knew what I was going to get. I was going to get a whooping. And there was no use to, you know, beat around the bush. I'd have been better off if I had have uh, went in that bathroom and said, nah, nah, I'm not going to go ahead and just duck it 
out in the commode. You know, I'm not going to take your cigarette. I, you, know, you see, uh, there's a lot in this world, a lot that uh, the Lord wants to, wants to pull us aside and get us just to take one draw, just one puff, just to sin a little bit. And in order to do that, in order to take that cigarette, I had to pull my uh, my respect away from daddy and mommy and my yieldedness unto what their values were. I had to pull that back and I had to get in myself. And when I did, I made a mistake and I had to pay for it later. I had two whippings that day and I don't know which was worse. I think mommy's was, uh, but that hurt me more than anything. Uh, not just to get a whooping at school, but for daddy and mommy to find out because they knew, uh, I mean, knowing that they, uh, how they felt, that they were, that they were raising us right and to behave and to, to mind the rules, you know, at school. And then what we were doing or what I was doing, I was breaking those rules. I was not respecting, uh, honoring my parents. And so that hurt them and that hurt me uh, more than anything. I tell you, we can avoid a lot of trouble in our life if we, during the times of temptation, during the times of uh, troubles, during the times of testings, uh, uh, during the good times when we everything is cruising and we feel like that we're going to be okay and all that. You know, that's a dangerous time because we're we'll laid down uh, on our service to the Lord and our giving to God. And then we'll say, nah, I, I believe I can handle things today. We can't handle things. The, we have to have God's victory at every hour because our, the devil is watching, our adversary is watching, and he's just waiting for us to lay down our guard. And what he hates most, Satan hates most, is to see a Christian's heart totally given unto his God. And here's the victory, praise God. This is what God wants, and this is what makes him happy. Uh, it's, it's not asking too much. Uh, the, uh, our Father in heaven is not asking too much of us. And it's not going to cost us. Uh, the cost is not too high to pay. Uh, and and it, it's God's not being selfish. But he knows that if we don't give him our heart, and if we don't let him have our heart, then no good is going to come out of our life. You see, it's for our own good that God, our Father, wants our heart. Because truly, amen, he can own us as his children. And thank God, we can have the blessed assurance that he is our God, that he is truly our Heavenly Father, if we continue to have a given heart unto God. Well, let's all stand. Anyone have anything you want to say before before we close? I thank mom and dad and especially God, he's a good God. Amen. I knew both of them when I walked with them. Amen. Isn't that it's it is. Praise God. Remember what the Bible says. Ye have a father in heaven. Right. We do. Thank God we belong in his family at his table. Amen. And let's keep ourselves given because it says we keep a given heart toward our Heavenly Father. Then that means, praise God, that, that he will give us everything we need to fully enjoy the relationship of being his child. Father, would you lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this 